Gospel and homily for the fifth Sunday of Lent. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. At daybreak he appeared in the temple again. And as all the people came to him, he sat down and he began to teach them. The scribes and Pharisees brought a woman along who had been caught committing adultery. And making her stand there in full view of everybody, they said to Jesus, Master, this woman was caught in the very act of committing adultery, and Moses has ordered us in the law to condemn women like this to death by stoning. What have you to say? They asked him this as a test, looking for something to use against him. But Jesus bent down and started writing on the ground with his finger. And as they persisted with their question, he looked up and said, if there is one of you who has not sinned, let him be the first to throw a stone at her. Then he bent down and wrote on the ground again. When they heard this, they went away one by one, beginning with the eldest, until Jesus was left alone with the woman who remained standing there. He looked up and said, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? No one, sir, she replied. Neither do I condemn you, said Jesus. Go away and don't sin any more. The Gospel of the Lord. Holy Week will soon be upon us where we recount the events of the trial, passion and death of Jesus. His trial, however, is not simply confined to the short period following his arrest in Gethsemane. It is going on in a protracted way long before that. And I think we have a good example of this in today's Gospel. The Pharisees and the scribes are envious of Jesus' popularity with the ordinary people. Even some of their own were changing sides. So they approach him with a hidden agenda. If he opts for leniency for the woman, he'll be accused of rejecting the Mosaic law. But if he goes for stoning, he'll be labeled being cruel and inhuman. Jesus wrong foots them, however, by suggesting that they take a long, hard look at themselves. To expose any wrongdoing on the woman's part in order to trap Jesus into something he might say shows the deviousness of the leaders. To use the sins of another as a pretext for setting someone up, it's what's happening here. Have we ever used the sins of a family members or individuals within an institution as a pretext to blacken the name of the whole institution or a person's whole family? Then we're no different from those who try to use the woman's sins to further their own evil end. Shortly before Jesus is arrested, Judas tries to humiliate Mary, the sister of Martha, when she anointed the feet of Jesus with very expensive ointment, suggesting that the money spent on the ointment should have been given to the poor instead. It was not because Judas cared about the poor, he actually used to help himself from the common fund, the common purse. Remember, Jesus was betrayed by him for 30 pieces of silver, so we know where his priorities lie. Jesus sees through this hypocrisy and he comes to her defense as he does Mary of Bethany today. The scribes and the Pharisees were not interested in the woman's welfare. In exposing her sin, they subject her to a kind of psychological abuse. 
Have we ever used the vulnerabilities of another to further our own tainted agenda with scant regard for the person's overall welfare? Sadly, I've heard of situations in a marriage breakup where the reputation of the estranged partner is sullied by the other party, often in front of children and grandchildren, with the sole aim of making themselves look good at the expense of the estranged partner. That's a sort of emotional exploitation of young minds. Much to the exasperation of Jesus, the Pharisees seem to be playing that game in today's Gospel. In not condemning the woman and sending her accusers packing, Jesus further inflames the hostility of the Jewish leaders towards himself. The full force of their anger will soon be vented during his trial and his coming passion. Jesus doesn't point the finger at anyone. On the contrary, when we acknowledge our guilt and seek his forgiveness, he comes to our defense as he did the woman in today's gospel. In his upcoming passion, all the guilt and shame of our sins is transferred onto him the fingers pointed at the woman today in the story will soon be pointed at him, the sinless one. No one will come to his defense. He will feel abandoned by all until he's vindicated and raised to life on Easter morning. Thank you for listening and God bless you all.